Now let's take a look at how the 7800X3D, when it's fully tuned, performs in Star Citizen. The memory is overclocked to 6400 MHz, resulting in 58 nanoseconds. For the motherboard, we're running a Gigabyte B65 Aros Elite AX. The overclock and tuned BIOS profile is available to my supporters in the Discord below. For the Intel platform, we're running the 1300K overclocked to 5.8 GHz with fully tuned memory at 8200 MHz, CL36. To begin with, we're doing the classic Lorville run all the way to the terminals. And if you want to copy this Lorville run and get your own benchmarks and results, then pay attention as it's been playing in the background so you can copy it and share your results. For the settings, we're running Klaus at very high and at 1080p to make sure we are completely CPU bottlenecked. For this test, we're doing both Vulkan and DirectX. For the results, the 7800XD does better in Vulkan than DirectX 11, but when comparing it against the fully tuned 1300K, we're looking at between 11 to 20% faster with this current new patch. And this is definitely noticeable. If you can notice the difference between going from DirectX 11 to Vulcan, you can definitely notice a 20% improvement on the 1% low if you were to move from a 7800X3D to a 1300K. Moving on, let's do something interesting. Let's compare the 7800X3D stock versus tune doing the £10.42 low wheel run. This run is a little bit more demanding because it goes all the way to the new dealership and looks over the Lorville horizon. This spot, for whatever reason, is very demanding and it will reveal the lowest performance you can expect when playing Star Citizen. For this test and any test onwards, we're only running Vulcan because Vulcan provides the best results. And as you can see, the tuned 7800XD is roughly 7 to 10% faster than a stock one in Star Citizen. Meanwhile, against the Intel platform, the Intel platform is roughly 17 to 30% faster than the tuned 7800X3D. Meanwhile, it's roughly 26% to 41% faster than a stock one. Add 10% pound 42 results on the top they're within the same range of my stock system now be mindful i do have an optimized windows 10 which might explain the performance differences between the both platforms moving on to orison the 7800 xd performs much better and on the average it's pretty much on par with the 300k however take a look at the one percent low the 300k is actually nine percent faster and you will feel that now if you want to see the stock settings of this just remove five to ten percent and you get a sense of what a stock system will perform in Orison for the 7800X3D. You might have noticed that I kind of skipped Area 18 and the reason why is because when you take a look at the Area 18 results, I don't think these results represent the real performance of the 7800X3D fully tuned. This is because during testing we had in pictures launch week which meant that in Area 18 there was just so much garbage going on which impacted how much garbage the 7800X3D needed to render. So these results here are not reflecting the actual performance that you would expect during a normal session of Star Citizen in Area 18. I have done over 200 runs of Star Citizen and throughout my testings I have looked at what is it on the server side that causes poor performance when I do my run to runs. It actually has nothing to do with server FPS, it actually has nothing to do with actual server performance or the number of entities. The performance impact on your CPU or client is purely based on how much work the server requests your client to do. So what happens when a server spawns a lot of NPCs in your area, it affects your client performance. And that's exactly what we saw here in Area 18. It just overwhelmed the 7800X3D when there was a lot of stuff being spawned in the background that it had to kind of like put into memory and keep there. So in summary, the 1300K is still the king. It still outperforms the 7800X3D fully tuned in situations that are very demanding. Yes, there are certain places where the 7800X3D performs way better, such as in space, but when it comes to real demanding scenes and when there's a lot of things happening, aka real gameplay, then the 1300K will outperform the 7800X3D. Now, I have used both CPUs for a long period of time, and I feel the same way over and over again. The 1300K is still the best, and the only thing unoptimized is your PC.